Live from the Moscone Convention Center in San Francisco, California, it's The Q at Oracle Open World 2014. Brought to you by headline sponsor QLogic with support from HGST, Violin Memory, and Mark Logic. Now, here is your host, Dave Vellante. Hi, everybody, we're back. This is The Cube, and we're here live at Oracle Open World, live in the QLogic booth. This is our fifth year at Open World. Thank you to QLogic and our other sponsors. Um, QLogic gives us about two-thirds of its booth to run this production here. It's been a fantastic partnership with QLogic uh, over the last several years. Uh, David Floyer is here, he's the CTO of Wikibon. He is an expert in a lot of things, IT, data center, uh, certainly the server markets. We forced him many years ago to start looking at other infrastructure like storage. Uh, knows a lot about database, we're in the heart of the database land. Uh, David, welcome to theCUBE, always a pleasure to have you on. Thanks very much, Dave. So, you know, the big news Sunday uh, in the infrastructure side of the world, there's so much to talk about, but let's just get right to it. Um, FS1, Oracle on its last conference call, Safra Katz said that San and Larry Ellison echoed this, San was down, but we got some new announcements coming up that's going to potentially address that. That was the FS1, <clears throat> which was the sort of original pillar data, Axiom, redone, now called the FS1. We confirmed with Mike Workman, it is actually a, a new operating system. It's yep. a Linux on Oracle OS. Bit operating system. Using yeah. the features of, of Pillar Data, which were three par like, friends at three par cringing right now, <laughs> going, oh, no way, blah, blah. but <laughs> similar in that it was born in that virtualization yeah. era, yeah. focused on simplifying, focused on quality of service, and some of those features they brought along. Uh, but I, I joked with Mike Workman, hey, you look good after, uh, having been tied up in an R&D lab for the last two years, but that's essentially what happened. Larry Ellison bought the company and said, okay, Here's a bunch of cash, let's do the roadmap. Well, let's do the roadmap, here's a bunch of cash to get it done, get it done. Yeah. And, it, and I'm sure it was challenging given uh, what the product you know, ultimately became. I called it the chameleon. So, give us your breakdown, bumper sticker, summarize the FS1, um, how should we think about it? So, uh, FS1 is a, is, a, is a good product. It, they really brought the best of pillar and the things that I really like about from the pillar are the quality of service uh, and the tiering. And they put that together and called it uh, QoS Plus. And it is, they have very fine grain uh, breaking down of the, uh, of the elements that they can move around. Uh, they have the four tiers and they have two flash tiers, which is the first uh, time, well, a compellent had a sort of two tier flash, but uh, two flash tiers and two disk tiers, so performance flash, capacity flash, performance disk, and capacity disk. Um, and they manage this quality of service extremely well. What they can do is take each I.O. Uh, and then give it a priority. So, and they will then bump, instead of just taking them one at a time, they will bump the I.O.s from the higher, uh, higher uh, workloads up. And, and give them a better service. So, very nice uh, design from, uh, from a utilization point of view, very nice design from a performance point of view, SLA point of view. And um, they've thrown in a few other things as well, which are very nice. They've got um, automated quality, uh, sorry, automated provisioning. So, they've predefined how you should set up Oracle databases and Oracle applications and even some non-Oracle ones like um, uh, Microsoft Exchange. And they've done all this work and they've, they can automate it. It's a single click to automate it. So they've done a really good job of making it work with Oracle, work with Oracle uh, software. Um, it's, it, it's a good fit with Oracle software done a very, very good job of bringing it out, I think in that time scale, it's been well, a pretty good and time. If you compare, look at, I mean, they're, they're, it, it's basically replacing the Sun Sand yeah. product. Right. Which, you know, I mean, yeah. didn't, wasn't winning industry awards, you know, no offense to my former friends at Sun. It's interesting they kept the Sun brand. Yes. Um, I, well, I, I yeah. noticed that on the, on the we were look, I'm looking at one of the boxes here. Um, so, so you're we had EMC on yesterday and they said it's a hybrid array called it a hybrid. Um, Mike Workman said, no, no, 
<laughs> uh, hybrid. <laughs> I don't know, maybe not to get yeah. academic into definitions, but is it, your, in your view, a hybrid array? Well, it, it is uh, half flash and half disk, and it, and it does combine the two pretty well. But you can use it as a flash only. Uh, however, uh, if you're going to use it as a flash only, you would want to have some of the features that the flash only people have put a lot of effort into. So for example, if you're going to have it as a general purpose flash only device, as opposed to an Oracle flash only device, you would want compression, you would want deduplication to be on those boxes, because that's going to cut your price down by a good factor of four or five. Uh, so, so if you call it a flash only, it's not yet in the marketplace, but for the Oracle marketplace, where you're using, for example, uh, a hy uh, the hybrid uh, uh, column columnar compression, that will then work very well with the, the flash side of it, and you'll get very good results. So, so let me that. make sure I understand it. So you said it's, ha it's part flash, part spinning disk. Yes, yes. Uh, but I think of a hybrid array as sort of a, 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 an array that puts some things on flash, moves them to, no, to spinning it, disk. Yeah. It's not of that ilk. So it's not of that ilk when, when at I, all. So, so yeah. okay, but if I am allocating, do I have to manually allocate a volume to, yeah. to flash? That's yes, how exactly works. the same. Oh, yes. okay. And it's tiers. Well, I guess if it, you're... It's, it's exactly the same as a tiered system from BMAX, uh, if you like, except that there you, well, it's very similar. You have the multiple tiers. They, they have four specific tiers, and uh, it'll take it up and promote it to the tier. Okay, so it's necessary. got an automated tiering capability. Absolutely, yes. So why yes. isn't it a hybrid? Well, because uh, the, the hybrid is where usually, for example, if you talk about Tintree or some of the yeah, other sure. ones, it comes or straight into the flash and then goes down from there, okay? So it's a flash first. It's a that flash first hybrid in this one. First. Here, you, you have a volume and it'll decide whether it puts it on the flash first or on the, on the lowest Although volume. not all hybrids are flash first. I mean, no, well, yes, but most of them have that propensity. But it, 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 for example, it has a very, very nice way of breaking up the database. And the redo log, you put in a different place and use different because technology. Because it's sequential exactly. workload. Exactly. You wouldn't want to yes. put that necessarily yes. in Flash. Yes. And uh, so it's very smart about how it does things. So it's a, it's a more traditional uh, tiering array, but uh, the performance of the flash components of it are very good indeed. So it really is purpose built for Oracle yes. environments. Yes. Um, okay, so, so that's good. So let's, um, let's take a look at uh, you know, Oracle storage today yeah. versus say, when did Oracle acquire Sun? 2010, I want to yep. say, is that, was that right? And they acquired, uh, they, they acquired or is it, uh, uh, Pillar in 2011, yes. Yeah, okay, hmm. so at the time, Sun storage was like, eh. You know, I used to talk to McNeely all the time, you got to get your act together in storage. And <laughs> like, well, a server company, takes some time. You worked at IBM, you know, the <laughs> challenges. Um, but really, the, the lineup was, was pretty mediocre. Now with the investments that Oracle has made, first in the NAS side with the ZFS appliance, yeah. I'm bad with names, ZS32 or something, yeah. I think is what they're called. Um, that is a flash first array. Yep. Good design, uh, some really strong use cases for backup, particularly in some bandwidth, lighter analytics. Very high bandwidth analytics. for it, yeah. Uh, and, yeah. And, but the big gap was on the block side, that's what FS1 yeah. fills. So, hmm. I, I have said earlier on theCUBE, a lot of customers that I talk to, you ask them what their storage strategy is, and they say, EMC for block, NetApp for file. That's their strategy. Looks like you got FS1 for yeah. block, and ZFS for file. That's exactly right. Is that right. kind of the yeah. strategy that Oracle yes. customers are going to take? I, uh, absolutely. There, there is a capability within this block of doing file as well, but that is not their focus, and it shouldn't be their focus. So the ZF, uh, the, uh, they've got two good lines. They're sharing a lot of the technology, the disk drives, etc., and the and the and the uh, the, uh, the uh, disk enclosures. They're sharing that between the two of them, but there's two separate products, which both of which do different jobs for Oracle, Oracle applications. So Matt, can we call up that, that slide that we've been showing intermittently today? So this is, David, just so you can see. Yes, this is the one I remember about. that slide. So Larry yeah. brought it up yeah. Sunday night, 
Yeah. Um, and Mike Workman brought it again up yesterday at his discussion at lunch. You got the Extreme IO <laughs> on the left side, the Oracle on the right side. These are Oracle benchmarks. You know, they're renowned for this, basically saying we're 10 times faster, it's five times better, it's half Absolutely. the price. Absolutely, yeah. You know? And that's yeah. not all. Um, <laughs> so Mike Workman was on here, and, and Stu and I were trying to, um, to, to get it word and edgewise under, o over his enthusiasm for this, because he's obviously very excited. It's like yes. giving birth, it's as you know. It's a, it's um, a but great I, product, it's a great product. I said, yeah. Floyer's coming on later. <laughs> you, know, I, I, you know, that's nice that you say it's half the price. So I want, I want to get your analysis on, I mean, everybody takes this stuff with a grain of salt, although, I bet you there's a lot of DBAs in the audience that are like nodding their head going, okay. Oh, yeah. So what's the, I don't know if you've had time to peel this back, I'll understand what the workload is underneath. I, I, I don't know if precisely what work they're doing. But first of all, there are two types of flash in the box. There's a the capacity flash and there's the performance flash. Okay. So if you're going flash for price, <laughs> if you're going for price, yeah, yeah. Uh, you're going to go for the uh, uh, capacity flash. And if by chance the workload was an HCC type workload, which is mainly read, that would be a very good use of the uh, uh, capacity flash on that particular box. So horses for courses, that would be a very good fit indeed. That would bring the price down very significantly. Okay, but let's, yeah. let's dig in. This is a marketing chart. Is it still yeah. up there? Yeah, I, I can there. see it, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, so it's got, it starts with capacity. This is a two node yeah. building block. So we got capacity, Read IOPS, write IOPS, re, uh, read write 50 50, read write 50 50, all IOPS, and then yeah. gigabytes per second, so right. bandwidth, writes, and reads. Yeah. So you got yeah. IOPS, you got bandwidth, there's no latency. Yeah. Uh, Mike Workman says 500 milliseconds, microseconds. Yeah. Sorry, latency. Yeah. Um, sounds, sounds very reasonable. Yeah. Sounds reasonable. I'm not yeah. sure why they didn't show any latency figures. I don't think, no, well that, again, uh, you know. Again, if it happens to be that workload, then you'll have very big blocks and you'll be doing them very, you know, as big blocks and the IO time will be a lot longer. Um, so these so are 32K block sizes. Blocks, yes. which don't, aren't yeah. the normal sort of database block yeah. size, although he pointed out that, you know, redo logs, yeah. for well, example, yeah. will be bigger block much, sizes. Much bigger blocks, and I, I suspect for this one it'll be much bigger All right, blocks so as well. I'm, so I'm going to put words in your mouth. You're saying this is rigged in favor of, I, of, of Oracle. It, it, you know, they're a good marketing side, and, and it'll be truthful uh, that at this particular moment, using this particular workload and this particular features of their product. Right, if this, it, if this, and it, this, and this, and this, exactly. if this, yes. then then we smoke them. Yeah, we smoke them. And it's them. always yes. horses for courses. Right. So, okay, so but yeah. knowing what you know about the FS1, knowing what you know about the Extreme IO, what are the horses for courses? Talk to customers. Well, so, so, so if you're going to take uh, uh, a uh, online application, a LTP type application, <laughs> in, that sort of applica in that sort of area, um, deduplication uh, doesn't give you much. Uh, so it's going to be very good uh, compression is the, actually the better of the two. So, uh, both neither of them at the moment, the Extreme IO or the I have compression, uh, from the point of view of the piece of the workload you want to do for your uh, analytics stuff, that will have compression, that will go very fast. Sorry, I'm losing you, I'm losing oh. you. Let's back up. <laughs> you, got, you got Oracle FS1, no compression, but they use Oracle Hybrid Columnar Compression. For some of the workload types, yes. And by the way, less than half the price, I'm presuming they, Oracle had compression on. If you, have, if you have the right application, you can get 10 to one. Uh, do, you, do you know what was assumed for compression in these? these? No, I don't. You don't. But I would you suspect, I, I strongly you suspect, suspect. You strongly suspect Oracle had compression yes, on and, and, and Extreme IO had it off? And of course, because it's you, not shipping yet? If you have why? compression on, then your bandwidth goes up, and your uh, throughput goes and up, your cost and, goes down. and your cost goes down. So, so what can people expect? I yeah. know there's no typical, but what can people expect on average for compression rates? Um, compression rates for three to one? Three uh, to one, okay. Uh, for, for no LTP type. Yeah, okay. Uh, and, and, and uh, that's Whether it's good. hybrid columnar or done in the array, you're going to have similar type of? Uh, well, the hybrid columnar is much bigger than that, because that can only be done on 
uh, analytics and workloads like that. Ah, so, so not OLTP. So OLTP is row-based, col columnar. Yeah, columnar so what's, the, is, what's uh, Oracle's strategy for compression in an OLTP environment? Well, there you use much smaller blocks. Uh, your compression rate goes down. What am I, com what's you my? Two to one to three to one. Well, so well, how are they doing that? Is that in the database still, or? No, oh well, no, that would, that, I mean, I don't know how they're going to do it. They haven't, they haven't got it for Rho. Uh, so, okay, so, so, so that would be an advantage for well, a product that has compression. Has compression, like Pure, for example. And, it may, and probably and Extreme, Extreme IO is, coming, is right? going to come, it's, it's coming soon. Isn't yes. everybody going to have this? A absolutely. I mean, yes. This is going to be like yeah. table stakes, right? It's you wrote a piece on, yeah. the other day on Permabits Appliance, yeah, data absolutely. reduction appliance. Yeah. I mean, so anybody yeah. really wants it can go yeah. apply I mean, it. In, in my opinion, Oracle should put a permabit type solution in front of it if they don't want to do it themselves. Uh, it's a very good solution and for some workloads it, it'll uh, smoke, smoke other things, yeah. Okay, so you need more time to peel back. Uh, exactly but, but what's going on, but my experience is that it's a good product, it fits Oracle extremely well, uh, it, nice fit in terms of, and the ability to have multiple tiers for Flash is excellent. Okay, but now, so talk, I'm, a, I'm an IT practitioner, I'm a guy in the Wikibon community, I, I call you up, hey David, I read your piece in the FS1, and I saw I was at Oracle Open World, they're trashing you know, EMC. When should I use each? When should I consider FS1? When should I consider Extreme IO? So uh, FS1 is only uh, high performance Flash, obviously. So FS1? So no, sorry, sorry, Extreme the, IO. The, the Extreme IO, yeah, yeah. yes. So if you've got certain workloads where you need the lowest latency uh, possible OLTP, then probably the Extreme IO is going to do a better job in that one area. It's not going to be a huge difference between the two, but where latency is critical, then Extreme IO is probably going to do very well. Um, if, you've got, uh, uh, if you've got a lot of different workloads and you're spending a lot of time setting them up, tearing them down, then the automation that you get in the FS1 is excellent. It really is. I mean, one particularly within the red stack. Absolutely. Now, what yeah. about things like snapshots? You didn't mention that. Snapshots. Uh, they have a set of uh, snapshot they? capabilities. Well, uh, Extreme IO have very good snapshots. Yeah. They have the uh, the uh, very uh, space efficient snapshots. And one of the things that they're emphasizing is the ability to share the same flash data over multiple applications. So you can share the OLTP with the analytic with other things. So that's an area where the, their type of snapshot does better. Oracle, I'm sure, are going to have the same type of technique. You have to with flash. Uh, um, but it's more and, of a cloning Do you know type. if it's in there today or you're not, you don't I, know? I, it's, it's more of a cloning type. The, 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 so uh, it's not uh, as space efficient today? It's not as, as space efficient, no. Okay. So, so in that area, but again, the two are collide, going to collide. Um, they're going to have very similar features. So you didn't mention sort of what, what you typically talk about with Oracle versus EMC or others like NetApp, the horizontal support for applications across the portfolio versus the narrow vertical. It sounds like Oracle FS1 is tuned for the narrow vertical red stack, but Workman said on theCUBE today, oh, we support VMware, Absolutely. we support yes. Microsoft Hyper-V, yes. we support yes. other environments, that's st strategically yes. we're going after yeah. that, so. Uh, well, in, in order to support those, you're going to have to need deduplication and compression. Outside of the database. Outside of the database. Dude, what do you make of, in that what do you make of, take the hybrid columnar compression, for example, what do you make of the fact that Oracle basically locks out its competitors from taking advantage of hybrid columnar compression? Before Oracle owned Sun, of course, it never would have done that because it would have wanted all the array companies to have hybrid columnar compression and take advantage of its software. Now that it owns Sun, it, it plays that card. You think that's a good strategy or I is think that it's dangerous? a dumb strategy. Why? Because, because they make far more money from the, uh, the, the database, database. Than they do from the storage. Uh, and pushing the database and getting them uh, into the data warehouse and analytics stuff, that's under real pressure from a whole lot of other players. So why not have it working on all storage and, and improve the uh, productivity. People are not using that. That would be a benefit to customers. Oracle's yes. always, I mean, Oracle's always yeah. talking about how oh, Larry's up, oh, we care about our customers, yeah. we care I about agree. our customers. If I you agree. really yeah. you know, cared about your customers more than gaining storage market share, wouldn't you open up hybrid Absolutely. columnar compression to I everybody? Would, every day of the week, yeah. So, I mean, it's clear. Oracle yeah. wants to gain share in storage. Okay, yeah. but eventually there could be pressure because that be. sort of yeah. forces the other storage vendors toward Microsoft's camp. 
Microsoft said, hey, we'll let you take advantage of our bell and whistle. Yeah, that's Whatever right. it is. Yeah. So yeah. If, to the extent yeah. that the Microsoft database becomes more competitive from an I, ecosystem I, I, standpoint. Oracle database is still a damn okay, good Okay, then, then, <laughs> then if Oracle's still got that much of a lead over Microsoft. In the high end. Okay, yes. so in the high and, end. And, yeah. and DB2 is still narrowly focused on IBM customers, then why not well, use it as a lever to gain storage market share? DB2 in this very area of hybrid columnar compression is actually doing extremely well. They're, they've got a really good announcement with uh, DB2 for data warehousing uh, applications. No, so, IBM's a player, yeah. no doubt. Yeah. Um, okay, so, so that's good. We covered a lot of ground there. What about NetApp? You know, Net, NetApp got a big booth here. No, yeah. no, no EMC booth at the show. Um, they decided not to uh, invest this year. Maybe they'll be back next year. EMC's put a big effort into Oracle over the last three years. Probably decided to take a little breather, save some cash. Who knows? Uh, but NetApp's got a big presence here. Um, what do you see for NetApp these days? Well, uh, NetApp has, has, as you, you said earlier on, NetApp and the Phylus, uh, they are very, very deeply entrenched. And a lot of backup is done on NetApp boxes within a huge amount and of And Oracle's backup. going after Oracle NetApp. Shop. Oracle, yeah. you know, we had an Oracle executive on at VMware, VMworld, uh, and, and Oracle wants a share of used that to be yeah. one of NetApp's biggest customers. NetApp yeah. was a reference customer. NetApp talked about them a lot. Yeah. Dave Hitz for years talked about you know, Oracle. So they had an Oracle affinity. And, and uh, the, the guest in the cube said that Oracle IT swept the shop of NetApp, brought in the ZFS array, exactly. whatever, whichever yes. one it was, and he gave you know, all kinds of sort of metrics on how much money they saved, et cetera. Now, of course, you got to be Again, those metrics are yesterday's NetApp but, with our but today. The, the throughput but still, is the key for backup. But it's right, and, right. And so, uh, yeah. so yeah. NetApp lost a big account, and it looks like Oracle for the NAS stuff is going hard after NetApp. It's one of the areas that's growing, according to Safra Katz in the conference calls. Um, not much within hardware was growing recently, but that is, Supercluster I think is, yeah. obviously engineered systems, and we'll see about FS1. Um, but where is NetApp these days? What do you, I know on, you spent On the database time side, which well, is the just, interesting one. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Let's, let's talk, actually, let's talk, talk NetApp specific within Oracle, and yeah. then you know, generally, with their NetApp. Well, we're, with, on the Oracle, we did some re research recently on the leadership, Oracle leadership, and we asked, uh, asked people with Oracle, heavy Oracle users, uh, where Oracle was an important component. We asked them to rate who their best supplier was, and a storage supplier and infrastructure. And on the, um, on the storage side, EMC got a very high percentage, and Oracle was, came up very strongly as well. Really? Very strong, both of them. 42% for EMC, 16% for Oracle. NetApp were way down at 5%. So that shows you, for the high-end Oracle, NetApp are not really playing. Now, in the lower end, of course, they, they have a very good story. But in the high end, they're, they're, they're just not playing at all. Similarly, when you're looking at the, the um, server, what they, what they picked out as the best server, Cisco has done extremely well. Whereas before, you'd accept IBM to be up there and HP. Now it's Cisco who's uh, competing. But when you looked at their choice of VCE versus, for example, uh, uh, the um, NetApp combination with Cisco. Um, it was a eight to one difference between the two. So again, in the high end, they're having ch a challenge. It's in the lower end, it's in the, uh, the NAS style that they're, they're doing extremely well. It's interesting, I'm looking at this chart. I just, I just put it out on CrowdChat. Uh, CrowdChat.net slash OOW14 is the hashtag. This chart about the single most important factor for Oracle infrastructure leadership, reliability. Reliability the chart, is everything off the, chart. off the top. Yeah. For, this is for yeah. Oracle intense environments. I mean, yeah. every other thing else pales in comparison. Availability, That's IO right. performance, yeah. virtualization. That's the same same survey Oracle. that we did. Yes, we asked right. the other yeah, yeah, I Googled on. it and it came yeah. up here. But right. reliability. Yeah. For infrastructure, that's it's interesting. For, for, for Oracle, that's it. I mean, that's why they sell the rack, it's so so reliable. 
it's software reliability that it's, uh, that's most important for those guys. And that's another reason why the FS1 works so well, because it's, it works well with Rack and it works well with uh, all of the software. Uh, it, it doesn't have to do the sort of uh, work that EMC does, it avoids it. So you have this other chart in here on, on Mindshare. Mindshare, that's the one. Oracle, see, you see EMC is up at 42% and uh, Oracle at 16 So what are you measuring here? What is this? This is, this is the Mindshare. Your single so you said who leads in, yes. in, in infrastructure? That's right. Yeah, who is, the, who is the, you think does the best job in Oracle uh, infrastructure and storage? Okay. And, and there's the there's a Mindshare one in the same uh, in one of the uh, papers that I did uh, on uh, servers as well, which shows uh, uh, VCE coming up strongly. That's yeah. interesting. Um, so it's interesting. A couple things. One is that strategically, Oracle's going after NetApp. I guess it makes sense. They get the NAS product. They go after NetApp. Yeah. But this this FS1 clearly positioned to go after EMC. EMC is number yeah. one in Oracle. Number one, you know, yes, storage clearly. company by yes. far. Yes, yes. Right. By, by um, far and away. Yes, and the, and the more Oracle you have, the higher the availability and reliability. The more EMC. So, you what's have. your prediction? Well, right now EMC is number one in block, and NetApp's probably number one in file. Yeah. Will Oracle be number one in either of those within the next five years? No. No. Why no, not? They, they, because there's so many other workloads out there other than Oracle. Um, and they're growing faster than the, uh, the it's, where, it's so the mainframe. Where, where they'll say, okay, we got yeah. this other main workloads, we'll yeah. put Oracle on there too. Yes. Right, yes. okay. So, I mean, if you, if, you, if you look at it as Oracle as being the, the mainframe type of software, all the other software is coming around it and it's growing much faster. Okay, so yeah. that's, that's one question. Next question is, 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 will Oracle gain meaningful share in storage in the next five years? Yes, absolutely. In its space. I think by, by, by combining the software and the hardware together and making these stacks, the exadatas and uh, the FS1 will go into that same stack, it can share, share things more easily. Who gets, who gets hurt? Um, EMC, NetApp, or others? E EMC. You think, you think EMC. EMC will lose share within we'll the Oracle? We'll lose share in the Oracle space. Really? Very significant. I mean, it's not, a, it's not it common. It'll still be leading. It's not but, common that EMC yeah. loses share yeah. and yeah. In anything, they always, you know, seem like they, they, get, they, will, they get booted out of Dell. They go and yeah. after Dell, they get knocked out of the OEM relationship with HP. They go dominate HP. Yeah. They have a knack of doing that. You think? Yeah. Uh, well, you think it's more the, it's more challenging yeah, to do that? They, than what Oracle they're doing very well is the VC, and they will use that as a general purpose way of getting into that area. Uh, but their proportion of, EM, you know, if you look at EMC, it's Cisco is a lot high percentage of that. So, right, we're, yeah. I mean, we haven't even, we haven't even. Talked about these other things. We're out of time. Can I can I go a little bit longer? I'd like to. I gotta get your take on Oracle Cloud. Hmm. Oracle um, Sunday night. Larry Ellison. I don't, I don't know if you heard his talk. Uh, yeah. Said basically, we had to be. We made a promise to our customers to be in all three layers of the cloud: infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, and and SaaS. Um, they're kind of defining platform as a service as database, Java, other tools. Yep. Very um, sensibly. That's a good proportion. So you look it. at that as pass. I mean, yeah. you see what like yeah. what Cloud Foundry's doing. You see mm -hmm. what uh, Salesforce is doing. Oracle's right there with them, in your view. I mean, I, it's it's providing scales, a slightly different. Web scale. Uh, it's providing a slightly different um, <laughs> awesome. uh, service, but they can provide the software and the software maintenance and the application. Their applications, they can provide a soup to nuts, single throat to choke. And, and it's very complex, right. you know, and that's something that nobody else can do for so their let's, workload. Let's so talk uh, about the, the yeah. infrastructure as a service. The Oracle said that they will price consistent with Amazon and Google and Microsoft. Mm. Um, they don't have the volumes that those guys have, not even close. I had heard that they have like 20 or 30,000 servers in their data center. I don't know how many Google has, but it's more than 20,000. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's got to be hundreds of thousands. Hundreds of thousands. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe they're pushing a million, but so but, they, but look at where the cost is for, for Oracle. Look at the maintenance cost, for example, for them to maintain yeah. their own products and all those different platforms. If they can make this platform the priority platform, they can cut down the amount that they spend on maintenance on their products by a factor of two or three. 
that is a huge saving to so them. So I feel like, well, we know that one of the advantages that, that certainly Google and, Mike, uh, and Google and Amazon have is the homogeneity of their infrastructure. Right. Probably to a large degree getting to be the case at Microsoft. But here it's the homogeneity of software yes. and the services around it that is going to be the killer uh, price tag. Can for, IBM for replicate that homogeneity? <laughs> if it had Oracle, it might. Uh, but it lost out to uh, you mean with if it had Sun? Well, if it had the Oracle database. It, it, it's the software here that is the, if you look at, look at the cost of the infrastructure that for, for an Oracle application, 70% of it is the database. Yeah, but IBM's not paying that cost for its own database, right? It's, 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 no, it, it, it's using... Right, they have to get them it's to convert using its own. to DB2. Well but, no, well, but IBM has its own cloud, and IBM, sure. IBM can offer database as a service but, with but, DB2. But, but the price for, of the, the profitability of saying, that database... Right, so what you're saying when IBM offers yeah, it's uh, a, Oracle as a service... It has to go to Oracle. The customer's paying Oracle the yeah. money. Okay. Or, or IBM is paying Oracle the money. So, yeah. So Microsoft's got the an advantage there, obviously. Absolutely. Plenty of beaten, people yeah. using SQL Server. Yes. yes. Okay, so. Yeah. And, and it's got its ordinary uh, software so, of exchange so and other things like so that. So in infrastructure of a service, uh, Oracle, from a volume standpoint, can't compete against Amazon and Google, but it, it's, it owns its own hardware. It owns its own hardware, and, and it owns database. its own software. Yeah, so and it's the software costs that it can bring down. So it, it so, can, it, so uh, economically, it should be able to compete. Yeah, I believe so. Because yes. it's got software marginal yeah. economics. It owns yeah. the software. Amazon exactly. yep. customers are paying Oracle. Yep. For Oracle. If yep. and I Microsoft know. owns so much of the software. I don't as well. know. I have to ask. We're going to reinvent in when is it? November. Mm. We're going to have to poke at this a little bit. I know a Amazon's pretty forceful about getting software companies to lo list in the marketplace. Many do. I'm not sure Oracle does. I kind of doubt Oracle does. It's called a bring your own, they have bring your own software. I think they designed bring your own software for Oracle. Well, they, they have an agreement to have a software, uh, sorry, Oracle by the, uh, by the cup. Um, Oracle by the drink. By the drink, yes, uh, within it. But Oracle, of course, can compete very effectively with that for a larger drink, you know, for a, for a, for a pint of beer as opposed to a sip of beer, yeah. Yeah, I can understand how that works um, because you know, when you look at, again, the economics of this, the whole cloud thing, I, I think of you know, VMware you know, building out its own data centers for hybrid cloud service, VMware slash EMC. Uh, I look at the collection of 4,000 service providers, all smaller than Amazon, and saying, it's going to be tough to get 4,000 companies all homogeneous on VMware when many of them want to use Zen, and OpenStack, and... Well, right. t take an example, for example, for Oracle, the ODA, you know, the yeah, Oracle the appliance. Database Appliance. Sure. They, can, they can reduce the price of that, of their, of their uh, software by uh, virtualizing the cores, and, and then they can say, oh, you only need two, you can only have two. And on top of that, the, the ISV can reduce its prices in terms of being able to reduce the amount of effort required to do that. So th the net effect of that is that it's that the higher up the stack you go, the more you can cut of that price. Well, we, what, I, uh, what I've written about is SME, single Yeah, you've said there's density. more value the higher yeah. up the stack so you go. So as, you, as long as you have the applications and the database and, and you can get the ISVs to come in and use your service, you're going to be in a very good position. So, so there's, there's a big chunk of market that they can go after and do extremely well. So you think that, so don't be off put, uh, my daughter just texted me, my daughter who's now at college, and she asked me how I was, so I was sending her pictures a of selfie. the Cube, <laughs> live in the Cube. So I don't get to talk to my daughter as much anymore it's now that she's <laughs> off at school. But So you think that they can effectively compete economically because they own the full stack. That's right, yes. Right. And, 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 and Microsoft can as well. Uh, that doesn't mean to say there won't be new players in this field for the software because the ISVs can now go to a much cheaper places like Amazon and develop new applications with new functionality. That's a whole different story. It's interesting, you know, I mean, a year ago Workday was looking like awesome. Oracle's now sort of, you know, Shooting. marketing, positioning, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> and, and doing so very effectively. Now, I, have, I mean, we're a PeopleSoft user. Uh, we know, you know, what it's like. It's kind of clunky. 
not the best <laughs> interface in the world, but uh, it was great in the client server day, but so I don't doubt that there's some other advantages out there. We were at Infor a couple weeks ago seeing some of their beautiful, yeah, elegant yeah. software. By uh, vertical, but, by, but, by but, micro vertical. Yeah. But Oracle, you know, they got the, these big companies, they got cash, they got marketing, if, and they got they, customers. Yep, and if they take that strategy and go down into the micro vertical with that amount of cash behind them. A lot of observers don't like this tr talk track, but it's hard to, it's very hard to predict like there's going to be some total innovator's dilemma disruption because of cloud to, to Oracle. They've, they've, they've jumped in just like Microsoft has. All right, yeah. we're getting the high sign. I'm getting the hook here, David. All right, okay, uh, great Good to talk to you. A couple, talk, to, uh, a couple topics anyway. Thanks for your insights. And, no problem. Uh, always a pleasure. Check out wikibon.org. David Floyd's got a bunch of research up there. Uh, Oracle leadership stuff that he's done, uh, the FS1 analysis. Uh, we've done tons of stuff on you know, extreme I.O. if you want to compare sort of, you know, an independent perspective. And uh, so again, thanks for coming on. No problem. All right, keep it right there, everybody. Uh, we will be right back after this word. This is theCUBE, we're live from Moscone. This is Oracle Open World, this is theCUBE. <laughs>